Every summer at Glen Helen Raceway in Southern California, a race is put on by the Prairie Dogs Motorcycle Club. But this race is far from your typical race, at least any that I've ever participated in. It is an ultimate test of man and machine against the steep mountainous and rocky terrain of Glen Helen, against the hot Southern California summer weather, against the sadistic course designers who seem to take a morbid delight in designing a course through near vertical hills, along cliffs and ledges, and over hellish man-made obstacles. With the exception of a few of the most talented professional riders in the world, some obstacles could not be conquered without other riders teaming up. Most of all, it is man and machine against himself. Success in this race is a true measure of skill on a motorcycle, physical fitness, endurance, mental focus, and strategy. While the difficulty of the course is legendary, and I can make an entire video focusing on just that, there was definitely something greater going on here. I'm not saying I was not immensely impressed with the displays of skill, strength, courage, and resolve of the riders who finished this race. I truly was awestruck by the likes of Kyle Redman, Tristan Hart, and Taylor Robert, the top three finishers. Hell, I was impressed with every rider that strapped on a helmet and rode that day. But what I saw at this race that in some way seems to outshine the course difficulty or who won or lost was the incredible teamwork and even self-sacrifice I witnessed near the finish of the second race. Before I go too much further, I guess I have to point out just how difficult some of this course was so that you can have a greater appreciation of what I'm talking about. Keep in mind that I'm just one guy with a drone and a couple of cameras, and I couldn't get to every section that I wanted to. There were plenty of difficult sections that were just out of my reach. But what I can do is try to give you a sense of how brutal this course was from the footage I was able to get. Fortunately, I also have some first person footage supplied by Nathan Berger of Stillwell Performance out of Scottsdale, Arizona, that gives a little better first person perspective from the first and part of the second round of what was scheduled as a three round event. Nathan rode well, but unfortunately, he had a little accident in the second race of the day. This is the waterfall and uh, lost my footing. And so my bike is down there. Uh, you might be able to see it way down right where my finger's pointing, I think. Right about in there. So uh, yeah, this is going to be fun to see. This is just LD2. So uh, this is going to be fun. First, there is this eye-catching yellow teeter-totter obstacle. Now this looks rather easy, and it can be, but a lapse in focus or poor judgment can have devastating results. Just ask Corey Grafunder, 
who launched himself into the air and broke his ankle on the landing in the prologue and ended his race day early. Just before the finish line, we have these huge concrete pipes. Now, if you weren't there, you're going to have to trust me on this. On video, this might not look very intimidating, but in person standing next to it, you can't help but feel a little loosening of the bowels when looking up at it. One mistake here and it's a long way down, and it could be a 250 pound dirt bike coming down on top of you. This guy got lucky. I wasn't there when another rider wasn't so lucky and had his bike fall on top of him. Then, there are these insane hill climbs and descents to contend with. These wouldn't be so bad if it was an established trail and there was an obvious line to take, but these hills were never meant to be ridden. And this is just a small sample. There was much more of this beyond the reach of my cameras. Then somewhere in the middle of all of this chaos comes the dreaded rock section, a small sampling of what it might be like to go through Carl's dinner at the Erzberg Rodeo in Austria. If you're not a rider, you might not understand exactly how much an obstacle like this saps every last ounce of energy from you. Somehow, these riders managed, and they were able to continue. And here's something you don't see every day. I don't even have words for this. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's definitely creative. Could you imagine if your head got stuck in one of those tires? You'd get yanked right off your bike by your neck. Oh, and then there's this. A nice, beautiful water feature. Minus the giant logs, some riders might have been looking forward to this obstacle. The cool water providing a respite from the hot California sun. But this is no resort on the beach. This is more like a light sprinkling in hell. Now they say that lack of common experience is one of the biggest barriers to effective communication. If you've never had the experience of racing off-road, hopefully the images I've shown you so far can help you overcome at least some of those barriers. Maybe then you can empathize and possibly relate to the anxiety, the fear, the pain, the exhaustion that these riders must be going through. Some of you are probably questioning why anybody would do this. I can only say that there are no pictures, no video, and certainly no well-written descriptions that I could give you that would adequately explain the rush or the sense of accomplishment, pride, exhilaration that fills a racer in competition against other racers and against themselves. But I would bet that many racers would give you a less dramatic answer. Like famous mountain climber Mallory said after being asked why climb Mount Everest. Because it's there. And some of the pros might also add, for a cut of the $10,000 purse, and that's not to say that it's about money for the pros. They all had to pay their dues to get where they're at. We all have to start somewhere. But for the amateur, it's the lack of financial or tangible gain considering the risk that amazes me every race, and especially in this one. For instance, take these guys. This is the end of the second race. Time is running out for these men. It's highly unlikely that any of them will win, let alone finish the third race. Yet they persist. No one could blame them if they just packed it in and they said they gave it the old college try. But that's not the type of people that start this kind of challenge to begin with. And as every minute, every second ticks by, the glory of the finish line slips further and further out of reach. Confronted by the fact that there are only mere minutes left for them to complete the obstacle or be disqualified from the next race, and with no concern for themselves, these hard competitors band together to at least ensure that one of them will make it to the next round. That's amazing. That is my big takeaway from this race. Even a professional like Taylor Robert, exhausted and so close to the end, doesn't hesitate to show true grit and sportsmanship. 
This is the side of racing that so many of us are unaware of. This is the side of those rowdy, delinquent, hooligan dirt bike riders that is seldom celebrated. To every one of you who completed this race, on behalf of all of those who do not have the guts, determination, and heart that it must take to do this, I salute you. Now I want to thank Prairie Dogs MC and their title sponsors for granting me the access to their event. They were gracious hosts and they put on one hell of a show. And if you fancy yourself a racer, I challenge you to enter this event next year. This has become a bucket list race for me. And for those of you who don't race, what are you waiting for? And for those of you who don't even ride, well, get a dirt bike already. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to remind you that if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. If you want to see more videos like it, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can get a notification whenever I post a new video. If you really like what I'm doing here, consider supporting the channel through Patreon at patreon.com slash joerockstar. Or head over to joerockstar.com and purchase one of my Brap Cancer t-shirts or a hat. And let me know how I'm doing in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook at Joe Rockstar. Anyways, you guys rock. And we'll see you next time. Go Shredder, man. Go, go, go. There it is.